Hey guys, welcome to this channel, this is Abhishek Mamadis. I am very excited to start a new course on YouTube, which is getting started with PySpark and it's purely hands-on course. This is a introduction video and in this video we will see what is PySpark and why should you learn PySpark and then the contents of this course. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. What is PySpark? PySpark is a combination of Python and Apache Spark. As you know, when it comes to data science and machine learning, Python is one of the most popular languages for data pre-processing, wrangling and data modeling. It's becoming really, really popular. On the other side, Apache Spark is the most powerful big data tool, which is a parallel distributed processing framework. And the core power of this Apache Spark is to handle huge amounts of data and process huge amounts of data. When you are working on a cluster, it can distribute the tasks across nodes. And for your information, Spark is written in Scala and runs on JVM, which is Java Virtual Machine. So with the help of PySpark, we can leverage the power of Apache Spark using Python. If you are a Python user, then you are all set. You can easily learn PySpark. And at the same time, you can leverage the power of Apache Spark, where you can analyze huge amounts of data. In short, PySpark is an interface for Apache Spark in Python. Spark has many built-in components mainly for processing streaming data, machine learning, graph processing, and even interacting with data via SQL. And the best part is PySpark supports most of the Spark features, such as Spark SQL and data frame. If you have used SQL, then you can run SQL queries programmatically using SQL function on a Spark session, and it returns the result as a Spark data frame. On the PySpark data frame, you can use other PySpark features and process the data. So if you know how to use SQL, then you are already set. And then PySpark also supports Spark Streaming, MLE, which is used for building models and creating pipelines, and Spark Core. In summary, what I want to say is, if you know Python, then you can easily learn PySpark and leverage the power of Apache Spark, like all the above mentioned features. Then what are you waiting for? This is the best time to add this to your skill set, and it boosts your resume as well. Let's go into the contents of this course. In this course, I will cover the basics of PySpark. And if you are looking to start learning PySpark for your projects, then this course is for you. Nowadays, companies are using PySpark to process huge amounts of data. So that's why this is the best time to learn PySpark. Here are the few topics that I am going to cover in this course. I will show you how to set up the environment on Colab, how Apache Spark works and its components. So what exactly Apache Spark and how it works how to read and write data in PySpark and then converting PySpark data frame to Pandas data frame and vice versa. This is really helpful when you want to switch from PySpark to Pandas and Pandas to PySpark and summarizing the data in PySpark. If you have used Pandas, then you must have used describe, percentage and schema to know how the data is. Similarly, we see how we can summarize the data in PySpark. And then we also see how we can use PySpark transformations and actions. PySpark works on a concept called lazy execution. In Pandas, when you execute any command, then it returns a result after the execution. But in PySpark, it works on lazy execution. So when you apply any transformation, it creates a DAG. Let's say you read the data and then you apply it multiple transformations, right? So it just takes one or two seconds to execute those commands because it it will not do processing when you run those commands. It just creates a DAG internally. But when you apply any action on the output data frame, then it executes the whole DAG and gives you the output. And then how to use user defined functions in PySpark. So you can directly use Python functions and apply those Python functions directly on the PySpark data frame. How beautiful it is. And then how to use Windows functions in PySpark. Windows functions are useful when it comes to time series data sets or transactional data sets. Once I complete the basic concepts for pre-processing in PySpark, then we go into machine learning, where we leverage Spark ML for modeling. Come, going to advanced concepts, we also see how we can leverage PySparkling water for modeling, which is H2O sparkling water. And at the end, we also see end-to-end -end projects in PySpark. In the future, I will be adding more videos to this playlist. I hope you like the content of this course and looking forward for your participation in the coming videos. At the end of this course, you will be able to do projects in PySpark. That's the end of the introduction video, guys. If you like this video, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon.
please do share this course with your friends and colleagues thank you so much meet you in the next video